have one. We got um, Finch here. We got Manipulative against Sage for Snake. Um, I'm currently finishing a piece of chocolate, but that's okay. Makes people talk. <laughs> um, I had a pretty cool Decidui team from Sage. I know Pearl had a team like that last SBL. I think um, Pac used and then Team N used against um, Manipulative himself. So, hey, we see that again, but, um, hmm. Manip's got a balanced team with Tentacruel. Maybe could lean a bit bulky offensive, but I think I'll class that more as balanced. Um, hmm. I'm going to say Z Lottie, Bandit Terrax, Scarf Crook, Rux, Agron, Spin Tenta, and just like Wish Support um, on the floor. Just seems pretty fine. Um, I think the matchup kind of favors Sage in the sense that. Every time the Crawdon comes in, it should do a lot of damage because the first time it comes in, it chips the aggro. The second time it comes in, it probably could kill it. Chip more damage. And I think it's able to come in on Tentacruel on if the Crook gets a kill and on um, aggro as well. So it, it's got a decent matchup here for Crawdon. Um, hmm. I think Sidueye does pretty well as well, um, if you think about it. Also a nice pick is it pretty much blankets such down stall that lacks like random Mandy Buzz. Which I don't think we really see anymore, I'll be honest. Hmm. Um, in terms of things Manip can do to really take advantage of Sage's team, I think if he clicks the right move with Threk and he gets to kill most of the time, Stone Edge against the um Lottie and Decidueye and close combat against everything else. Fleur just also actually just spams Moonblast. No fairy resist. Yeah, what the hell? Every time Fleur just gets in, it does significant damage. It's doing like at least 50 to everything besides maybe Cobain. It's doing like 42. And maybe Mammoth. I don't know, but... Anyway, we see a good start for Manipulate if you're actually... I think he might have a matchup, honestly, with the Fleur. Just, it's kind of odd. Hmm. I guess we'll see anyway as the game goes on, but Stealth Rock as the Crowdon comes in. Probably just gonna see a crab hammer here, which should do significant damage. I'd guess I'd do like 35 40 here. Um Hmm. Yeah, Crab Hammer is gonna do 48. Wow, that's banded. And then Earth is gonna do 46 back. Honestly. Probably a worthwhile trade for the manipulative side, if only because the other crab hammer switch ins, both at a knockoff, and you kind of want to scout out the move just to be sure. Maybe put in a sword stance as well. You were to go to Tentacruel. So, yeah, I think that's fine. You don't really need this much health here. You can still check in Latias once and fire it off to whatever. Hell, I wouldn't even mind if he earthquake again, to be honest. It hits everything besides Latias, which you then wall afterwards for some damage, and you've got your rocks up already in this trade. Is favorable. I think my nip is in a good spot right now. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking if I'm a nip, I would comfortably just earthquake again. Honestly, if I'm sage, I think I just grab hammer again as well. I, I think you kind of have to. You put yourself in this position to initiate. I, I would have potentially considered going to Manectric, but then you kind of run the weird issue of sure you could flamethrower, but then you get crook and you could like pursue you. Like, what if he goes floor just and you lose momentum? And yada, 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 yada. Uh, but I guess that was okay. And we're going to see the tentacle here. I'm not too fond of that play because now, I mean, it's just one little bit closer to where, like, for example, a rock polished Cobalion could just really clean, clean house against you. And you can't even kill this. Like, maybe it's like Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave, but. I don't know if it really packs it particularly often, especially, um, hmm. Right now, he goes on a knockoff. Okay, so he's going to be able to eat this crab hammer, but now he's out of the range for Aqua Jet. Sure. But now he's at 17%, and he's only done like 57%. I feel like with Agron, you just stay in, you kind of make a trade there. Honestly, and I think that he put himself in a much more compromised position against Cobalion now. So, we'll have to see how he reacts to that. If it's like Rod Polish Cobalion, then that's a really bad start for Manipulative now. Hmm. I think we just see a knockoff from Sage. And I think we probably just see Scald. 
I mean, you could go Agron, but like... No, nah, I don't think you go Agron. Shit, my screen just went black for a second. I don't know if you guys saw it go black, or if it was just like going black. Hopefully you can see it on. But... Hmm. Anyway, I, I think that Sage is in a better position than he was because of Manip's unnecessary play. There's Rancy called there, and no burn. Oh, burn. Just kidding. Anyway, so the burn there essentially makes it 5-5 with rocks up on the other side. So here it looks like Manip is in a good position, but I really feel like that Cobalion um, is quite threatening, especially if it's Stealth Rock on the Mammoth line, which admittedly is less common than you might... Um, Imagine. So therefore, I think it's like 65-35 that the Cobalion is the South Rocker, and Mammoth Line is just four attacks, but um, if it was a Swords Dance or an offensive Cobalion set, then it would really be annoying here. Um, although, Sage doesn't really have Pursuit, so if the Latias stays at full, then it should be manageable. Anyway, that burn was nice for the manipulative side, for sure. Although, okay, Cobalion coming in here means that it is more likely than not going to be um, just a Stealth Rock supportive variant, not minding taking potential Moonblast damage for 40-45%, which might make some sense if it had, like, a little HP investment or something. I mean, there's no fairy resist on Sage's team, which, I mean, I guess is fine, but, like, for example, having Mamoswine as the main um, Altaria counterplay isn't great. Although I guess Cobalion does the trick as well, I just don't really find it to be durable enough to where like a matchup versus balance is that great here. But I think that they probably expected something more extreme from Manipulative, seeing as he's often stalling and he starts off poorly in tournaments. And I mean, if he wasn't going to stall, he'd probably pull out something more offensive. We're going to see a wish to the Latias here. Let's see, Thun. Latias doesn't take any damage, but it prevents potential like any like Iron Head or Volt Switch bullshit. And there's no pursuit to take advantage of that anyway. And rocks come up. We're going to see combine here. We're just going to see uh, Iron Head, 39%. And now Sage is in trouble. Um, I think if you're Sage, you'll probably just fodder off the crowd on. If you're Manip and you have Roost, you click it 100% of the time, in my opinion. And we're going to see the crowd on. We're going to see a Roost. Yup, very nicely done by Manipulative. So now it's a 5-5 game. And I imagine that, um, well... I think Mammoth Line, you have to just Mammoth Line and Ice Shard. So I think this is a trade that would be fine for Manipulative. I don't really think there's much of an alternative, seeing as the Terrakion dies to Earthquake and Aggron dies to Earthquake. Although I guess Terrakion would be a fine play because Ice Shard is almost 100% here. Yeah, but anyway, they go for the trade. That's fine. We're going to see the Z here just to assure the kill. Shattered Psych. That leaves him also plus one special attack while avoiding potential Draco miss. And now the Manectric comes in, and I don't know if Hidden Power is going to kill here. I think that plus that neutral does a like 40 to 45, 46 ish. I think it probably tops out in the mid 40s, whereas I know against Latios and OU, it probably tops around like 52. So yeah, um, but I think the roll would probably be strongly in the favor of Sage, but also there's not much of an alternative here. Um, the benefit of this position for Manipulative is the fact that if you'd like to preserve this, which in my opinion he should consider doing, if it's not at all in his favor, he can go to Florges very safely here. And then not only does he get Florges, but he also gets a pretty much um, risk-free Moonblast, and seeing his HP Ice is going to do a mere 12%. He's going to risk it, though, and Signal Beam... Oh, well, I mean, okay, I don't really agree with that play. But maybe he lived ice and signal beam was a roll or something. I, I don't know. Regardless, that's a bit bizarre. Um, I guess it's for Celebi, which would make sense, especially seeing you have Cobalion. We've got um, slower Crawdon, slower Memo Swine, I guess. I mean, I don't really think this team is nasty plot Celebi week, but I think the right Celebi set could be at least be annoying. Maybe not sweet, but it'd be annoying. But I guess what hinges on the Latios, Latios set, rather. If the Latios set doesn't do much against it, then it's a different story. But anyway, Florge is in now, so uh, Crit there is quite annoying, actually doing 39%, so he'll do a bit under 34% after the Leftovers recovery. However, Moonblast here should do quite a number to the likely incoming Combalion. It's just that now you switch Florge out, and then it's not really going to be able to come in that much. It'll probably just be able to come in after a fodder against Manek, for example, or Lati. Mm, we're going to see the Decidueye instead, interestingly enough. Moonblast here, 43%. Special attack drop. I think you go Aggron here. I think you kind of are obligated to go Aggron here. 
However, if you're predicting a Disorder Dance, if you live a Leaf Blade with the Terrakion, you could go to it. I would not risk the Crocodile, Crocodile rather, if only because you want it healthy for the Latias, seeing as if it's a Z Latias variant, which it probably isn't, seeing as it's likely Z Decidueye. Lack of leftovers and offensive damage pop up, but then it could potentially get rid of the um, Aggron, although after Rocks, HP Fire would not kill, but after like a Psychic or a Thunder or something, it easily would. Manip's timer is down to 15. We're going to see the Aggron here, which is fine play. Substitute here, nicely done. Um, the thing is that this Z move should not kill. Since Star Raid, probably do like 35. 36, yep. Heavy Slam there. Par for the course. Sub was good there because it covered the Tarak slash Crook option as you get into Overgrow. So then, even with minus one or neutral, you're going to be able to kill with Leaf Blade after they trade. So yeah, I feel like that was a fine play. I think if you're a um, Manip here, you kind of are obligated to go to Crocodile. Um, now this comes to get awkward. Like, what move do you click? Um, if you don't click Earthquake, then the Cobalion is going to really do well. Whereas if you don't click Knockoff, then the Latias is really going to do well. So I think that ultimately you decide to um, Earthquake, uh, just to make sure you don't get the Cobalion. Assuming it kills, it, it should kill. Five seconds left for Manipulative. Knockoff is the play. Cobalion is going to come on in and probably just pick off Florges. Uh, I mean, I guess Latias would have done the same, making that fine. Hmm. 20 seconds left for Manipulative. I almost wonder if he goes to Cobalion on an Iron Head. To track on an Iron Head, just trying to eat it and then maybe like force some fuck up. I guess just go for close combat then and you hope he doesn't go Lati. Or you go Stone Edge freaking Lati, I don't know. But I think you have to fight a floor just honestly. I mean, not that there's much room here. I mean, no matter what you do. Okay, he goes to the track and he makes the track and play. And Iron Head is going to die to a critical hit, which definitely did matter. However, while it did matter, I mean, it only mattered if you won a speed tie. Um, I mean, so I don't really know if Manipulative can complain much. I, I feel like if he preserved the Tentacruel, then he would have just been in a better position overall. But anyway, this Cobalion is going to Earthquake for like 85%. And... Then, um, I don't know if the Cobalion stays in, actually. It might go Latio. Um, and it's at five seconds, four, three, two, one, and Sage is thinking, not Manip. Anyway, I think if you're Manip here, you just kind of Earthquake. You don't really have much of a choice. If you knock off into this, it's over. If you're Earthquake in the it's over. Hell, if you fucking knock into Lottie, it's still over. Actually, is it? Hmm. I think the Manectric might be the play then. So would Manip double to Floor just to try and heal that up? I guess that might be a slim opening to where if you can get like that play right and then you could double back to Crook on the Cobalion turn. But then, I mean, you have to argue, okay, he could just fodder Manectric anyway. So you've got to pick the right move too. And maybe have Sage Choke. But I mean, I guess it's not a 0% chance for Manip. I guess it's not 0 He goes to Floor just, and we're going to see the Latias. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. I don't know if Latias was the play I'd have went for there, but I guess it's all the same, seeing as Manectric can eat a knockoff, but I feel like it wouldn't want to switch in a minute plus the timer anyway. Well, I mean, it was kind of um, anticlimactic, but that's what happens when you ride the timer like that. Unfortunately enough, he says I clicked, but... um. Yeah, no, that sucks. Um, I have manipulative a chance. That's just unfortunate for him. But it looks like Sage emerges victorious regardless. Good game.